Good morning. Right, so the UK government is finally allowing people to leave the house, which is good news, because we're going to do just that. We're going to stay away from home. Yay! Just going to go pick Jasper up in a minute, but uh, before I can do that, I just want to clean the chain on my bike, because it's filthy. Oh, and I've got this 100 mile sportif coming up in like a week, and I need to try and do at least one ride whilst we're uh, away. And done. Well, it's not the cleanest, but for now, it'll do. And I'm packed. Let's get cracking. We're off to the seaside. Oh, it'd be nice to give my car a good run. Hmm, I haven't really thought about my charging strategy for today. Yeah, I think I'll just get in the car and see where it takes me. It's a nice thing about Teslas. It's, uh, I don't know, it just it doesn't seem to require planning like other EVs. Check it. Bikes, bags, laptops, you name it, we got it. Hi. Right, we've stopped at Blue Water. We're gonna grab some lunch here and we're gonna charge the car up because this is the best place to stop and have lunch. That's what I reckon. Yay! Yay! Lunch! Might even have a McDonald's. <gasps> McDonald's! After all, it is the Easter holidays. Hi. It's good to have you back on the vlog, Jazzy. Okay, we've charged up more than enough now. We're gonna to go to a Bannertime hotel and do a last yeah. charge because we're going to Legoland Windsor tomorrow and it's basically like a 200 mile journey there and back to Hastings. We don't have anywhere to charge in Hastings and I don't like leaving and the first thing I have to do is charge the car. I just, ugh, no, I'd rather charge at Hastings and then go park and then leave tomorrow morning with a full charge. So that's, that's the plan. That's what we're gonna go do and we're gonna go do it basically right this second. Always worries me that these things are gonna fall out and damage your car. This is how I get charge in my car when we're at Hastings. And Jasper is just having a good old Harry Potter session whilst we wait. So I think we've got about half an hour just to sort of zap the car up and then um, and then that should be it for the charging for today. Can I have some oh, Love the seaside. You can't see the sea from here anyway, but you know, you get the idea. Ah, oh, nice fresh sea air. Brilliant. Right, well, I always find it a bit stressful coming here, mainly because there's nowhere to park, which means there's also nowhere to charge, we're not at the property here. So, whilst we're down at the coast, uh, I basically have to live like somebody with um, no off-street parking, which is great, because it means I can prove that it is at least possible albeit inconvenient and honestly it is a bit inconvenient I mean we arrived here and the next thing I know I had to charge the car for 45 minutes which um yeah not ideal and I mean I, I could blame the fact that we're going to Legoland tomorrow but actually the truth is we'd want to charge it anyway so that we could leave which means tomorrow when we go to Legoland I've basically got to put in 200 miles worth of range so I'll probably charge on the way there and on the way back I'm not sure Quite a lot of charging, honestly. That's what you have to do with electric vehicles. At least until there's a bit more on the street charging. You know, honestly, there doesn't seem to be a huge amount of leadership from the government when it comes to actually keeping EVs charged. You know, if you don't have off street parking, if you can't do it yourself, it's, it's a bit of a mess, quite honestly. I mean, there are places you can charge around here, sure, but really, you wanna be able to charge where you park. Well, I do anyway. Right, let's go check out the seafront. Right, Millie, pop that down, Jazzy. We're going out. What are you looking at? You! <laughs> now, don't be fooled, guys. It might look nice and warm, 
It's blinking freezing. For some reason, we've got quite a chill in the air. What are you looking at, ya? Just ready to coincide with the easing of restrictions to do with COVID. So yeah, that's quite something. Oh, actually, speaking of easing restrictions, so today's the first day when the shops are open, and um, where we stopped before, Blue Water, it was absolutely rammed. It's like everybody decided to go shopping, which I, I kind of, I understand that. To be honest, I had a bit of a sort of rush to the head of joy when I realized the shops were open. Yeah, God, it's gorgeous here. I think probably more or less the whole country's had a bit of cabin, cabin fever, haven't they? I certainly have. This is the problem with England sometimes. Um, look, beautiful and sunny here, but it's just about to chuck it down. Ah! Okay, good news is we made it back before the rains fell. So um, one thing is quite clear. There are more and more EVs out on the road. Like I literally, I, I see them everywhere now, which is really impressive. And I'm, I'm really pleased that that's the way it's gone. But there clearly hasn't been the same surge forwards in charging, you know, capabilities. I mean, obviously there are, you know, there, there are exceptions to the rule. Like the, the grid serve place that I went was awesome. Petrol station of the future. Double thumbs up. But that is the exception and not the rule. And the government seems to be very much leaving it up to private businesses to supply this charging infrastructure as and when it, it suits their, their business priorities, which is, um, it leads to quite a haphazard rollout. And it means that just because you bought an EV doesn't mean that you'll actually be able to necessarily drive it across the country in an easy fashion. And, you know, okay, so I'm cheating a little bit, essentially, because with Tesla, you do get a bit of a guarantee. It's not cast iron. There are areas in the country where there aren't any superchargers around. Like, it'd be fantastic if there was a supercharger 10, 15 miles north of where I am on the south coast. That would be great. Sorry, that's my phone. It's just charging up. I'm going to go play Minecraft with Jasper in a second. Um, but the problem is, there isn't anything. So there's a kind of a smattering of other chargers, some of which work, some of which don't. I mean, I use this Instavolt one. It costs a fortune, but Instavolt seem to always work. And I know that you just pay by card. So it's, you know, there's no faff about sort of, oh, where's my app or my RFID card. Because the problem is I don't use these things very often. I mean, okay, so it's been a funny year, 2020, but I think I use Instavolt maybe two or three times in an average year. And it's only when I come here. And it's only because there isn't a supercharger that's conveniently located. I mean, tomorrow, for example, good example, got a bit of a problem. It's 170 miles door to door. And when we get back here, we have to have the same amount of charge as we currently have, which is about 180 odd miles. So somewhere in that journey, I need to put in about 170 which means I'm probably gonna charge on the way there and I'm probably gonna charge on the way back and I'm probably gonna charge each time for about 30, 40 minutes. It's a bit of a hassle. Partly that's because we don't have home charging here. If we had home charging here, then I would probably only charge once for about 20, 25 minutes, which, you know, across 170 miles of driving probably isn't the end of the world. I just combine it with a meal, whether you know, supper probably on the way back tomorrow, and that'd be job done. But I, I can't do that because they don't have the charging and there's no kind of slow trickle charge capability around here. I mean, I could easily cycle from the hotel where the Instavolt is to this house and leave the, uh, you know, leave, leave the car plugged in at the Instavolt, but that's not how quick chargers work. You know, I, I need overnight charging, you know, not like, petrol station stop charging that's that's really what I need anyway I mean it's just it's one of my big concerns that the infrastructure to support electric vehicles isn't really growing at the same speed as the actual sales of EVs and I hope that at some point some high up government person goes you know what we need to sort this out if we want to get to net you know, carbon zero by, I think it was 2050. 
You might have to give me one second, Jasper's just calling. Jasper is continually installing new games on his phone. It's, uh, ugh. like, yeah, I think he should install less new games on his phone and actually play some of the games he's already got, but there we go. Yeah, it definitely seems like there's a bit of a disconnect in terms of EV sales and actual EV infrastructure going into the ground, with the exception of Tesla, which has, of course, always been very good at putting EV infrastructure into the ground. I mean, this grid, grid surf place with, I think it had sort of 30 quick charges there, awesome. But, you know, Tesla's been sticking multiple supercharger sites all over the country, and they regularly have sort of eight, 10, 12 stalls or more. So, yeah. I mean, obviously, the other thing about the grid surf place, which was awesome, was they've got the shops and everything. So, yeah, I do recommend you visit it. But um, it's kind of odd. Did I, just, did I just literally suggest that a petrol station for EVs might make a good holiday destination? And one more thing, which is not really related to EVs, a little bit related to Tesla, dash cams. I, I think every car that gets sold, every new car should come with a dash cam. My mum's got a B-Class Merc, it's 12 months old, doesn't have a built-in dash cam. New Teslas do. That's how all cars should be, because quite honestly, there are some real idiots on the roads. Oh well, at least, you know, it's good that I'm back out on the road now and it seems like things are easing off a bit and, and hopefully life will be a bit more interesting for me, which will, with any luck, encourage me to make a few more videos because I really do want to get back into it. And I have been sort of, uh, to be honest, I've, I've been struggling with it, you know, just a little bit of depression perhaps, probably. I mean, I'm not, I don't love winter as it stands, so. This was never gonna be my most fun winter ever. Righty, well anyway, on that Debbie Downer of a note, I'm, um, I'm gonna say goodbye for the day. I hope you've enjoyed today's video. I hope you found it interesting and fun. Uh, if you have, remember to leave a like and subscribe if you haven't already to watch more fun videos involving my car, my bike, and just generally whatever other fun comes around the corner. And also I'm gonna try and sort of keep on top of sort of tech stories and EV news and stuff like that in a sort of bit more of a fully engaged way than I have been. Yeah, so it's gonna take a little while for me to sort of warm back into it. I mean, you know, I edit the videos and I can see that they're not the quality that I used to produce and they're not the quality that I want to produce, but I do also know from past experience that if I just get some videos out there, I will get there. So bear with me. Normal service will be resuming. Is it normal? Okay, not normal service. Abnormal service. Better than normal service will be resuming. Starting again, really soon. So, yay. And I will see you in the next episode of my vlog. Bye.